What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and after testing out the crazy Wi-Fi 7 routers from TP-Link and Aero, you guys asked me to test out the Orbi, so today we're gonna check out the new Netgear Orbi 970 series Wi-Fi 7 router. This is the latest and greatest mesh Wi-Fi system from Orbi, which is the successor to the older 960 series routers. Now, if you've watched some of my previous Wi-Fi test videos, you'll know that Orbi has made a history of making some of the fastest wireless routers, even though things seem to be changing a bit, which I I'll talk about later in the video. And keeping with their tradition of producing some of the most expensive mesh wireless systems, the three pack Orbi 970 retails for an insane $2,300. That's around 766 bucks per unit, making it the most expensive mesh system that I've tested here on the channel. Now, to be fair, they do offer a two pack system for around 1700 bucks, which I think is the smarter option, but either way, it's really expensive. All right, so what does 2300 bucks get you? Well, in the box, you get some documents AC adapters for all three of the units, a Cat6 Ethernet cable, and of course the three wireless units. I want to say these are the biggest routers I've ever tested, measuring around 11 and a half inches tall, 5.7 inches deep, and just over five inches wide. And when it comes to their overall design, I think in spite of their size that they're not bad looking. The 970 series comes in black or white, and I obviously have the white version here with me today, and I like that the white version has the nice gold accents around the edges. And each of the units has cooling at the top, an LED indicator light on the bottom front, and of course all the ports are on the back. So considering the insane capabilities of Wi-Fi 7, the main router has a 10 gigabit ethernet WAN port, another 10 gigabit port that can be used as either a wired backhaul for one of the satellite units, or it can be used for one of your 10 gig client devices. And the other four ports are 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, which work great for connecting other fast wired devices. So unlike some of the Wi-Fi systems I've tested from other brands that come with two or three identical units, the Orbi comes with a dedicated main router and two wireless access points. And each of the satellite units has three ethernet ports, one 10 gig port and two 2.5 gig ports. Now I do have some personal thoughts I wanna share on these ports, but I'll talk about that later in the video. So when it comes to specs, this is definitely where the 970 shines compared to the other brands. So unlike the others, the Orbi 970 is a quad band Wi-Fi 7 system. This means it actually has two dedicated six gigahertz bands, one five gigahertz band and a 2.4 gigahertz band. This is a pretty big deal since it allows the units to use one of the six gigahertz channels as a dedicated backhaul channel, and it frees up the other one for you to use for your six gigahertz client devices, which I'll talk about a bit later in the video. The system also comes with a 2.2 gigahertz quad core processor, four gigabytes of flash storage, two gigs of RAM, and it comes with a free one year subscription to Netgear Armor, which is Netgear's all-in-one internet security software. And considering this is a whole home or mesh Wi-Fi system, Netgear claims that each unit can cover around 3,300 square feet with the three pack system covering homes up to 10,000 square feet. So like I say with most mesh systems, I highly recommend staying away from the three pack system since you rarely need three of these. And when it comes to setting this system up, it was a breeze. As I say with every Orbi system, the Orbi app is polished and really easy to use. The app walks you through the entire setup process if you wanna use your phone, or you can set it up from a wired device using a web browser. And the app layout is really intuitive even though I do wish that they offered a bit more customization. But if you're looking for something simple and easy, this is definitely it. All right, so it has the high-end hardware and it certainly has the high-end pricing, but how does this system perform? Well, I did plenty of testing with this thing, but before I get to the test results, I wanna take a quick moment for today's video sponsor. This portion of today's video is sponsored by Pulseway. So if you didn't know, I've been working in the IT field for over 17 years, and one tool that I use for IT management is Pulseway. Pulseway is a remote monitoring and IT management platform that makes managing an IT infrastructure a breeze. Anybody who's ever worked as an IT system administrator or even managed a home network knows that automation is the key to keeping things running securely and reliably. Well, with Pulseway, you can easily manage software application packages, create deployments, and take care of operating system and application updates whether you're in the office or on the go. And not only does Pulseway allow you to automate typical tasks, but it also offers monitoring with real-time notifications when something goes wrong. This means no matter where you are, you'll be notified of an issue and you have the ability to address the problem right from your phone or laptop. So long gone are the days of being stuck at your desk waiting for something to break. So if you're looking to streamline your IT management tasks, be sure to use the links in the video description to get started with Pulseway today. I want to thank Pulseway for sponsoring this portion of today's video and let's get back into it. 
All right, so we're gonna get to the test results, but I wanna quickly go over my testing procedures and a bit of information about the hardware on the Orbi 970. So I have a standardized method of testing in my house, which consists of placing the main router in my kitchen, which is close to the center of the house, and I run speed tests from multiple locations using several wireless devices and a few internal speed test servers. So the client devices that I use for testing the Orbi includes the OnePlus 11 5G, which is one of the very few Wi-Fi 7 client devices out there, an iPhone 15 Pro Max, for Wi-Fi 6E 6 gigahertz tests, an iPhone 13 Pro Max for 5 gigahertz tests, and a Pixel 6 Pro as an alternate client for both 6 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz testing. All right, so let's jump right into the results. So the same room Wi-Fi 7 performance from the OnePlus 11 was really fast, but I gotta say, I was expecting to see slightly faster speeds. Now, don't get me wrong here, 2.8 gigabits per second down and almost three gigs up is still incredible, but considering we saw speeds faster than this from both the TP-Link and the Aero Wi-Fi 7 systems, I was expecting the Orbi to be faster or at least the same. And not only were the Wi-Fi 7 speeds great, but six gigahertz Wi-Fi 6E speeds were also so great. The speeds were really close to the TP-Link system, which is really impressive. And even though the five gigahertz wireless performance was good, it did produce probably the slowest speeds I've seen from any Orbi device, including the ones from a few years ago. I'm not really sure why I got these mediocre speeds on five gigahertz, and I tried multiple devices to make sure it wasn't a one-off, but the speeds I got here were pretty consistent. And here we had the 2.4 gigahertz results, which is mostly used for IoT or smart home devices nowadays. I don't really expect to see Blaze fast speeds here, but what surprised me with 2.4 gigahertz is the fact that I wasn't really able to get a good signal outside. This was mostly surprising to me because I was able to get a five gigahertz signal outside in a driveway, but not really a 2.4 gigahertz signal. But the one thing I noticed is that this system seemed to be a bit more stable than previous Orbi routers, which is really a big deal. When testing some of their older routers, I found that I would sometimes have random connectivity issues during testing, but that never happened with this system. So I'm not sure if they traded a bit of performance for stability, but either way, the system being more stable is definitely not a bad thing. All right, so the performance from the Orbi 970 is good, but is there anything I don't love about it? Well, there are a couple of things that I think could be better. The first one is obvious, and that's the price. At $2,300 for three units, it's easily the most expensive consumer-grade mesh system on the market. Another concern I have is the Ethernet ports. Traditionally, a lack of Ethernet ports is not something that I've seen from Orbi, but on the 970, I was pretty disappointed to see even less ports than were offered on older Orbi models. Not only are are there fewer ports, but they only give you two 10 gig ports on the main router and one on the satellite units. If you buy the three pack and you want to wire them all together to get the fastest speeds possible, you can only wire up one of the satellites with 10 gig. The other one will either have to be connected wirelessly or you'll be limited to one of the 2.5 gig ports. This is why both TP-Link and Eero offer two 10 gig ports on each of their units. This way you have more flexibility to connect the devices the way you want. And my last concern is with the software. One thing that I always complain about with mesh systems is the lack of advanced features and options in the software. I used to be able to split wireless bands and enable a dedicated six gigahertz channel with its own SSID, which is super helpful for testing and preventing compatibility issues, and Orbi has removed some of these options. In other words, after spending $2,300, I definitely shouldn't be struggling to customize the system with basic wireless configurations. Now, if you're a basic user who's looking for something fast, easy, and you have huge piles of money lying around, then the Orbi is a good system overall. And as I mentioned earlier, the fact that the 970 is quad band with that extra dedicated backhaul channel, it'll make a huge difference if you have a lot of wireless devices in your home, which is something that might actually warrant the higher price tag of this system. The other thing to remember is that at the time of this video, Wi-Fi 7 is still not finalized yet, so there's still room for a lot of future improvements to these systems, which can be done easily via an over-the-air update. But that's gonna pretty much do it for this video, guys. And if you're interested in checking out any of the systems that I mentioned in this video, be sure to check the links in the video description as the affiliate links are an easy way for you to support the channel. And as I mentioned in my last video, only about 10% of you guys are subscribed to the channel. So definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos. And make sure you hit that like button if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.